In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the final or the end product of my 2D tower defense tutorial. So if you choose to follow along with my tutorial, then you will end up with a product that looks exactly like this. So I will try to walk you through the different things that we'll be implementing in the tutorial so that you can see if it's something that you will be willing to follow along with and see if it's something that you will learn something from. So this video is simply a demonstration. The next video is the video where we start adding stuff and creating the game actually. So uh, as you can see here, we have a menu and this menu is the main menu and it's the first thing you see when you open up your game. We have some different buttons here. We have an options button and in options, I've added two things um, and the things has only something to do with volume of uh, music and sound. So the music volume here can be adjusted up and down um, and this is the in-game uh, in game music. And the sound volume here is the sounds that uh, are made when monsters take damage or when they die and something like SFX sounds. And these can also be increased and de or decreased. And this is simply just to um, show you that we can create some options. We can go back here and then we have a quit button. And the quit button doesn't work right now because I'm in the editor so I can't quit. But if you export the game, then the quit button will close down the game. As you can see here, the menu is also animated. All my towers here are animated and the portal up here is animated. There's also a red portal down here, but I guess my face is blocking the red portal so you can't really see it, but it looks exactly the same as the blue one, just red. So we have like some uh, some more fancy menu, or some menu that is more interactive or not interactive, more, more fun to look at instead of just a still picture. Okay, so we can click the play button and when we do so, well, then we will start our loading screen. So you will also learn how to add a loading screen to our game um, and how you can create this loading bar. Besides the loading bar, we also have some animations here so that it doesn't look boring. So I've just added my monsters to the screen here. Um, yeah, so that there is a movement here. As you can hear, the music starts in the background. Um, and I'll show you how we can turn that down in a bit. I hope you can still hear what I'm saying. When our loading screen is done, well, then we can press the, press the play button to start the game. And then the game is started. In here, we can press the escape button to open up the options. And in here, we can turn down our music volume so that you can actually hear everything that I'm saying. Oops. And then we can press back. And note that we just turned down the music volume here. So if I quit and go back to options out here in my main menu, it's also saved here. So if you open and close your game, all options will be saved, of course. Let's try to play it again. So let's try to take a closer look at the in-game elements here. In the top left corner, we have our currency. And right now I have $100. Um, and hundred dollars is quite a lot for this game as you can see because each tower is two to five dollars here So usually I only have five dollars from the get-go when I start the game But I've just bumped it up to a hundred so that I can demonstrate and show you guys how the game works In the middle is our wave counter and the wave counter counts what wave we are at We haven't played any waves yet. So the wave counter is by default here zero If I start a wave by clicking the wave button, it will increase to one and a monster will spawn. And for each wave, um, the amount of monsters will increase. So if I go to wave two, well then two monsters will spawn from this portal here. And the monster's task is to go from blue portal to the red portal. If it reaches the red, red portal here, it will reduce my lives with one. So now I have nine lives left instead of, uh, instead of 10. So I just lost the life. And as you can see, if I click again, wave two, two monsters will spawn up here. Um, I can build towers, but not when the game is going on. So I'm not able to click these buttons here while my monsters are moving around here. So I have to pick my places very carefully and think um, and, and try to make a strategy when I build towers, because I'm only able to build the towers now in the building phase in between waves. So now I can actually click on my towers here to place them. Um, as you can see here, um, there are different kinds of towers and there are also different kinds of monsters. First of all, I would like to explain the towers, then we can look at the monsters after. The first tower here is a storm tower and each tower has a debuff that they can apply to their target. 
This debuff is um, applied if the tower has a, if the tower procs when it hits the target. And the damage here is five, and the proc chance of the tower is ten percent, and the debuff duration when uh, this debuff procs on the on the enemy is one second. And the debuff here is the fact that it can stun the enemy for an amount of seconds. And right here, it can stun the enemy for one second. Um, we have a frost tower. The frost tower um, has a proc chance of 10 and it can slow the target and it slows the target's movement speed with 20% for 5 seconds if, if it uh, debuffs hits it. And uh, then we have our fire tower. The fire tower does 5 damage, it has a proc chance of 10 seconds, 10% uh, sorry, and the debuff takes 10 seconds and the debuff is actually a damage over time. So when you hit the target it will reduce its health over time, for example here it takes 1 uh, once every one second for those 10 seconds so it gives damage 10 times over over the debuff duration yes uh, then we have our poison tower and the, the poison tower um, does a splash debuff so it soaks the target in poison and when the target walks around it drops poison on the ground so other uh, mobs will step on this uh, poison and they will have their health reduced when they step on the poison besides Placing towers, you'll see that there's a blue ring around them. So when I click on the ring oh, on, the, on the tower, there's a blue ring appearing, and this ring actually uh, shows you the range of this tower. So this tower over here can actually reach all monsters within the blue area here. You can also upgrade your towers. So if I click on a tower here, I can mouse over the upgrade button, and then you can see we can increase damage and proc chance and all these things by upgrading it to level two. So now I'm level 2, now you can see this frost tower here is level 2. And I have one more upgrade, you can see the slowing factor can go from 30 and plus 20. So now I have 50 in slowing factor here. So now this tower is maximum level and can't be upgraded more. And the same goes for all the other towers, right? You can upgrade them to increase their stats and it's all maximum level 3, but you can add more levels if you want to. Um, you can also sell your towers. As you can see here, this tower here only sells for $1. And the reason that it sells for $1 is because it's not upgraded. Because the upgrade also um, goes in the price when you sell it again. And the, the sell price is half the price of the tower's worth here. So this is 2 plus the upgrades and that's like $6 on all or something. And that's $3. So now I sell it and I gain $3 from this. And try to sell all my towers here because I want to demonstrate one tower at a time. Um, yeah, so the towers has different elements. It's like storm, frost, fire, and poison. So the monsters has the same elements. There's a blue monster, which is a frost monster. There's a green monster. It's a poison monster. Red monster is um, is fire monster, and the purple monster is a storm monster. The monsters with the same elements take less damage from the towers. So the blue monster takes less damage from the frost tower. And every time it takes damage, the damage from the frost tower is reduced. Uh, also, the monsters with the same element are immune to the debuffs. So a blue monster cannot be slowed from the frost tower. Let's try to demonstrate these. Um, we have a storm tower here. And I can try to increase the proc chance of the tower just so you can see. Um, how it works. So the storm tower's proc chance is increased to 100%. So if we go in here, play, then you can see it will stun this target when it hits it. There you can see it stuns it for that one second here all the time. There you go. And now it died, the monster. You can also stun the red one. So that's the storm tower. And, and then we have our um, frost tower. I need to wait for the wave to stop so that I can build. Start the wave. And you see, this one is immune. So you can see it takes very little damage. Of course, it's two blow monsters that spawn. So it takes very little damage from this. Let's see if it gets to hit the red one. And there you can see it, it hits the red monster and it, it's speed here is reduced a little you can see the blue monsters are ahead of these two a lot now so that's the first tower 
and we have our fire tower here. Save the game. If it hits, there we go. And then you can see it takes damage over time all the time here because it has that um, yeah, debuff on it. And then when we're done here, we can try with the uh, poison tower as well. And now I died because I didn't have more <laughs> lives left. So let's just restart here. Next wave, first wave, of course it's immune. There we go. That's immune to poison, so it doesn't really proc that thing. So we have to wait for the next wave to spawn these. Okay, let's try again. There we go. He gets a poison on him, and if he doesn't die before it procs... Yeah, there we go. It's right there, and the blue monster hits it, and now he lost health here. It's a little hard to see. Anyway, um, the monsters try to find the uh, shortest path from blue to red here. And they do so by using an algorithm called A-star. A-star is used for pathfinding in, uh, in, in games. So we will also be learning how the A-star algorithm works and how to implement it in a Unity game. So that's also something that I've been looking forward to, to teaching you guys and to look at. So you can see here, if I would do this, the monsters will go down and up here. If they get that far now, there's so many monsters, uh, so many towers here. Uh, but they will try to take the shortest path through here. And then he goes this way, as you can see. Besides that, I also add a panning camera, so you can move the camera around on the map, like so on, on the keyboard. So you can see you could also place the red pole down here, so that you have a bigger map um, that you can't see. Where, where you can't see everything on the on the screen at all times here. If you are interested in the sprites and the project files for this tutorial, then you can acquire it in two different ways. You can get it by going to the Patreon page, where you can support me for $5, and if you do so, then you'll gain access to all the projects for any of my YouTube tutorials, and all the, all the assets and all the sprites and everything used in those tutorials, of course. And if you don't want to support me at $5, you can also support me by clicking the link on the bottom of the screen where you can get this project or any of my other projects as a standalone project. And you will, of course, also get access to the sprites and the project files and all the line comments and everything throughout that link. Remember that you do not need to buy my sprites to be able to follow along with the series. You can, of course, create your own placeholder sprites or find any tower defense sprites online and use them to, to go through with this tutorial. Um, but of course, I would really appreciate it if you choose to support my work and get my sprites, of course. Anyway, uh, let's get started with the actual tutorial series.